and I start out back here. The first thing is, is the P, and that is how far you really are away from where you want to be. If I'm way, way, way over here, I want to be moving faster towards it than if I'm way up here. I'm almost there here, I don't really know you need to give that much power to get there. So that's the first part is the P, how far away you are, your error. Uh, the next top part we talk about is the D, which is your derivative. It's, it's how fast you're going. Because if I'm going really, really fast running along, which I don't do so well after beta testing and so on, um, you want to actually kind of go, slow down a little bit. So D, the faster you're going, you kind of want to throw down your speed. So you take away a bit because of how fast you're going. So it's kind of to pull you back. And then the I is that sometimes you get into situations where my constants worked before and then somebody tightened up my gearboxes on the robot. So I'm really here, and the p-value that used to still give me enough power to finish this up doesn't work anymore. There's more resistance in it, and I just kind of sit here and I don't finish. And what the I does is the longer I'm away from where I want to be, or the hungrier you get, um, <laughs> the more you want to get, the more power you put into the system. So over time, the power output will increase because I have, I'm, it's been a longer time since I've been where I want to be. And that comes into a lot of fact when you'll get heating systems, like if you have a pool outside, the, the power that would usually get your pool from 77 to 80 degrees on a very cold night might not be enough power because there's too much heat being sapped off it. So the longer you're away from it, the more power you want to put into the system to actually bump it up to that speed. So P, I, and D, using those three parts, we can come up with a value that if you tune it correctly, will bring you quickly from far away, and then you'll slow down and stop right on the point you want to be at. And unfortunately, this ends up being three weeks of our build season is tuning these values so the robot doesn't oscillate all over the place. But you have the code up? All right, here we go. So this is a class that we wrote. We submitted it um, and said, we'd like this to be included in the library because they hadn't finished their PID class at that point, and I'm not sure if they'll go with it or not, but either way, this will be available. And what it does is, these are our, our members up at the top, the PIND coefficients, because what you do is, the tuning is, if I'm, let's say, three meters away, what should I multiply three meters by to give me the amount of power between zero and one to get there? So our class this year might be like .001, or something like that, but these are the three things that you spend, will spend half of your season tuning. Um, but we store a little extra information here. Um, can you go down to the actual calculation? That's really the guts of what's going on. Um, the calculation breaks down into three parts. So at the top here, um, don't worry about that first cycle part, we'll talk about that later. The P component, my error is the desired place I want to be minus where I currently am. So if I want to be 10,000 ticks over, and I'm only at 6,000 ticks, I have 4,000 ticks of my encoders left to go. That's my P value, my error. So I take that and I multiply it by my P coefficient, MP. So that's my P part. Um, let's skip over I because it's ugly and we'll come back to that. Keep going, see, it's really ugly. Um, my velocity, we have for the past few years tracked our velocity as, because we're on a set cycle time at 200 hertz, my velocity is a number of ticks I have covered per cycle. So I take Last cycle I was at 2,700 ticks, and this time I'm at 3,000 ticks. I've covered 300 ticks in that time. And Carly will correct me if I screw up my math, which would be embarrassing. So my speed there would be 300 ticks. So I take that and multiply it by my D constant. So now I have two components. I've got P, which I'm going to use for making my motors go faster. D is going to pull off that a little bit. And now we get to the complete ugliness um, that really is where people stall with this stuff, is the I. I is the hardest part to do well and the most important part to be effective. Um, in 06, we used PD control and it was extremely frustrating to keep your con the constants tuned exactly to the robot. If you have some I there, it, it allows you to be a little sloppier and adjust the situations a little better. But what we do for our I, I really every time, if, I am, if I'm 7,000 away this time, it should be 7,000. The next time I'm 6,500 away, it should be 13,500. Yeah, okay. And it should add up every time. But the problem with that, where most people run into with I, is that if you build up I like that, it's going to balloon and take over everything way too fast. So what we've done is we allow an I contribution maximum per cycle. And usually that's one. So if I'm not there yet, add one. If I'm not there yet, add one. And it'll build up slowly. You see